This is Jana's Kitchen and tonight is my mom's meatloaf recipe and I want to share it with you. Everybody's always looking for a great meatloaf recipe. So my mom's recipe is um, four slices of bread cubed and then you soak it in a half a cup of milk. And so I already did that just so that they can start to soften, okay, because they're already kind of falling apart. So just to save time, I did that. And then two eggs, and then two teaspoons of soy sauce. I'm using low sodium, but you can use whatever soy sauce you have. And then a tablespoon of parsley. I didn't have any fresh. And then those uh, dried onion flakes. Um, her recipe called for one teaspoon, but we really like onion, and so I added a little bit more. And then a brown gravy packet. You can use au jus packet too. I've done both because I don't always have one of them. Okay. And so get that ready to throw away. Nice having a sink right there. <laughs> I'll pick it up in a minute. And then I mix all of this together. That way all of the flavoring gets through all of it. And you can mash this up so that there's no pieces of bread or cut them smaller than my cubes. But we kind of like having a little piece of that bread in our family. And so then you add two pounds of ground chuck. And so I've got my ground chuck here. And then God's best tools on your hands. I like to wear gloves on camera because I even do off camera a lot, most of the time, just because it's easier to clean my hands up. And of course, the phone would always ring or something. And so get this mixed up really good. See how fast this is? Really fast. And then with this meal, traditionally in our family, even my mom, we served it with a baked potato and, um, for, yeah, for our French peas, I think they call them, but we call them baby peas, fresh peas. See? And just want to make sure that it gets all the way through your mixture. Get everything incorporated. And then... I have a baking pan and I put a Pam in it and then I put a piece of parchment in it because you know what that does is it makes it easier for um, your pan to not get gooped up. You can also put this in a loaf pan if that's what your family did. And then I divide this into loaves. I'm going to make three loaves tonight because we kind of like the crispiness of the edges. So I'm going to put them all in there first and then I'm going to see if I got them even because you want them to bake even. I've even done my scale before. And you can also just press it into a pan. You don't have to make three loaves, you can make two loaves. Well, this little guy looks a little bit lonesome here. And in just a minute, I'm gonna Put these in the oven and then I'm going to show you the topping that I make. And if you get them all mashed together and kind of smooth that on the top, it'll look really pretty. Yeah, that's as fast as it is to mix them together. See, meatloaf is easy and it's delicious. And I even make meatloaf sandwiches for leftovers. My husband will drive all the way home just to have a piece of microwaved meatloaf. <laughs> I don't like my meatloaf microwave, but he does. And so I'm going to put this right into an oven. And you can put it into 350 to 375. And then I'm going to be right back to show you what else I do. Okay, real quick. This is my mom's recipe for the topping of the meatloaf. But you can do anything you like, even just plain ketchup or tomato sauce or a jar of sweet and sour sauce. So you have a cup of ketchup and a quarter cup of brown sugar, light brown sugar. And then there's dry mustard right there. And then some nutmeg. 
and that was um, a quarter teaspoon of dry mustard, but I had made extra because my husband's a ketchupaholic. And then this is some nutmeg. You do not have to put the nutmeg in. I can keep that. And then I whisk this together. You don't have to cook it. You don't have to do anything. You just whisk it and set it aside. And then we're going to spread this on top of the meatloaf when there's about 15, 20 minutes left on that meatloaf. And that meatloaf bakes about, depending upon if you have your oven at 350 or 375, somewhere around 45 minutes. So about 40 minutes in, I'll put this topping on. I just saw a lump of brown sugar in there. So just like that. And so I'm going to set that aside. And then my secret is for the potatoes, the baked potatoes, because most of us are kind of in a hurry. I like my baked potatoes to be soft on the inside and crispy on the outside. So what I do very simply is I've microwaved my potatoes until they're about halfway done. I put them on either a cookie sheet or I like the muffin tin here because it fits in the oven better <laughs> with my meatloaf pan. I'm going to sprinkle the olive oil on there, but you can use any olive oil or any oil <laughs> that you like. And then I'm going to sprinkle them with a little bit of kosher salt like that. And I'm going to put these into the oven and they will time out about the very same time as my meatloaf. How fast of a dinner is that? Be back in a few. Okay, we're back and you can see there's a nice crust developing. Just slight pink juice is running out yet. So we aren't all the way done because we don't want it to be because we're still going to bake this for about 20 more minutes. So we don't want it raw, but we don't want it to be all the way done or get overcooked and dry. But there's a nice crust on this. We're going to spread our topping. Right on over here, divide it even. My husband and my daughter both love some ketchup on their meatloaf. So we're going to get this all on here. You want to cover all of it, all the ends. And I have a ground chuck, so there's, you know, you can see there's a little bit of fat on the bottom, but that's good. You want fat. You don't want to use like a 93% lean for meatloaf or meatballs. It's just doesn't work out very well. It's just too dry. What do you think? Yeah, and it falls apart. Good point, Erin. Get the end all done. There we go, a little bit down here. We used it all. There we go. Now I'm going to pop that back in the oven for just a few minutes and get my peas ready. You can steam them or whatever. I just microwave mine or I run hot water. And I know some of you might not like frozen peas, but if you've ever had canned peas and don't like peas, you might like the frozen ones because they don't even taste the same. I have a friend back when I was on TV and she was one of the morning news um, directors and she says, oh yuck, peas. And I said, you ate canned peas, didn't she? goes, yeah. And I said, have you ever had frozen peas? She says, no, because I don't like peas. She went home after she tasted peas and she's like, I didn't know that's what they really tasted like. And she went and bought lots of frozen peas because she loves them now. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to pop this back in for about 20 more minutes, and we'll be back. Oh, we are having a good old Midwestern meatloaf family Sunday dinner. And so as you can see, the meatloaf is all done. I had tested it with my meat thermometer, and it was 185 degrees internal temperature. And look at those crispy outside baked potatoes. And I've got my peas all ready to go. 
and I seasoned them with a little bit of butter, no salt, no pepper or anything, just a, couple, a tablespoon or so of butter. And that's all there was to it. So now, guess what? It's time to serve up our meatloaf. I know my husband is ready. This is gonna be meal tonight, and it's gonna be a meal for um, lunches this week and probably another supper. And so it works out perfectly. And all that fat that's at the bottom of the, pla the pan oops, is, look at it. I bet he's going to have two pieces. What do you think, Aaron? Mm -hmm. I think he'll have two pieces. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know he's going to have two pieces. And then grab a baked potato. Have it all served up. Put on a little bit of butter inside of that baked potato. He doesn't use as much butter in them as I do. A little bit of salt. A lot of bit of pepper. And of course, some peas. Here's our dishwasher saying it's done. And look at that. Sunday dinner is all ready to go. And we have got, you can see those cubes of bread in there. I smeared the ketchup on that, but it was 185 degrees internal temperature. It's all ready to go and it is absolutely delicious. So try this. Now I fry it you know, on a cast iron skillet or griddle or whatever you have. I fry the meatloaf for leftovers and put a slice of American cheese on it and, and uh, put it in a bun, a piece of bread, whatever, and you get yourself a meatloaf sandwich. Couldn't be any easier. Anyway, I hope that you uh, share this with people who are always looking for a great meatloaf dinner. Thank you, and we'll see you again real soon. And I'm going to have the recipe posted below um, in the... In the um, description box. So thanks, Aaron. I'm tired and hungry, so we're ready to eat. <laughs>